Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about the time-weighted and dollar-weighted returns. With a simple numeric example, I will also show how you can calculate and interpret these results. Measuring the performance of an investment is important for an individual investor or portfolio manager who manages clients' money. This performance is measured through different averaging techniques. For example, one might do time-weighted return and the other might do dollar-weighted return. Dollar-weighted returns are conservative in nature and yield lower returns than time-weighted returns. Hence, the investment managers may have the opportunity to inflate or deflate portfolio performance by adopting averaging techniques that best suit them. So what is time-weighted return? The return produced over time by a fund independent of contributions or withdrawals. It measures a fund's compounded rate of growth over a specified time period. TWRR, which is time-weighted returns, are not affected by the size of the interim cash inflows or outflows. The return for each period is calculated based on the amount of money in the portfolio at the start of each period. On the other hand, dollar-weighted return is the IRR, internal rate of return, which is the discount rate that equals the cost of an investment with the cash generated by that investment. Dollar-weighted return, which is DWRR, do reflect cash inflows and outflows as well as the investment performance of the funds chosen by the investor. Dollar-weighted returns can be heavily changed depending on if and when large cash flows in or out of an investment occur. Let's take an example. An investor buys three shares of XYZ at the beginning of 2010 buys another two shares at the beginning of 2011, sells one share at the beginning of 2012, and sells all four remaining shares at the beginning of 2013. Now, first question. What are the arithmetic and geometric average time-weighted returns for the investor? To calculate time-weighted average returns, we will calculate returns over sub-periods, specifically we disregard when money was deposited or withdrawn from the investment account, but calculate year-by-year -year rates of return. As you can see in the table, first column shows you year 2010 to 2011 and 2011 to 12. The second column, which is return, equals capital gain plus dividend divided by price. The capital gain is the purchase price is subtracted from the sales price. That is the capital gain. So in the first row, you have 110 minus 100 plus 4 is the dividend divided by 100 and gives you 14%. Likewise, you calculate returns for each of this period and you get negative 14.55% and 10%. Now you have three returns. In order to calculate the arithmetic mean, you simply add these three returns up and divide it by three, and you get 3.15%. If you want to apply geometric mean technique, what you do is you plug in one in each return, and then multiply these returns, and finally take cube root and minus one, and that gives you 2.33%. So your return on investment is either 3.15% based on arithmetic mean, or 2.33% based on geometric mean. Second question, what is the dollar weighted rate of return? To calculate dollar weighted average returns, we will calculate returns over sub periods based on when dollar was deposited or withdrawn from the investment account. In other words, we carefully prepare a chart of cash flows for the four dates corresponding to the returns of year for January 1st, 2010 to January 1st, 2013. Let's look at the cash flows in the table below. The year 2010, the investor bought three shares at $100 each. And this year can be considered zero year. Each year, the investor also received dividend, which will affect these cash flows. Negative indicates cash outflow and positive indicates cash 
inflows. So in the table, the first column says time, second column shows how you can calculate the cash flows, and the third col column explains what it means. Once you have these four cash flows ready in four different time periods, 0, 1, 2, and 3, you can put these cash flows in a timeline which will look like this. Net cash flow in zero year is negative 300, year one is negative 208, year 2, 110, year 3, 396. The dollar weighted return is the internal rate of return or IRR that sets the sum of the present value of each net cash flow to zero. Alternatively, you can use your financial calculator wherein you enter negative 300 as CF0, negative 208 as CF1, 110 as CF2, 396 as CF3. Once you entered all these cash flows, you press IRR and then press CPT. You get negative 0.1661%. So the dollar weighted return or internal rate of return is negative 0.1661%. If the investor chooses to report his performance using time weighted return, he will report a positive investment performance. If the investor chooses to report his performance using dollar weighted return, he will report a negative investment performance. I hope this video helps you understand the difference between time weighted return and dollar weighted return. Thanks for watching.